but there were some there were some really good things that you guys did when you first came in. Yeah. There was some season ticket deals uh, yeah. all around that Christmas. That was really good to pop up shop. There, there were some some great things that the fans really got yeah. on board with. Yeah. I At mean, what point during that process did you suddenly think, "Hang on a second, there, there's something really wrong here," and now they're changing their idea? It was constantly changing. One week it would be, "We're keeping it, build it." We're keeping it full stop, build it, have some money, here's some investment. The next week, something's happened. He's, I don't know, had an argument with the regulator, had an argument with his wife, whatever it may be. And it's, it's ridiculous. You know, there were times when he wouldn't talk to Salim and I for a week or two because we were trying to do something. He, it, I mean, the, the petulance was unbelievable. So behind the scenes, we're trying to run this thing. One minute we've been told we're keeping it, invest, bring players, find a good manager, do this, do this. The next minute it's, I'm selling it. Rothschild are coming in next week, get everything ready for a sale. This person's selling it, talk to that person about selling it. So there was just no consistency. And so we're, Salim and I were told one thing, and then Hisham in his head is either doing another or believing another or deceiving us, or, or we all know now he's got the capacity to deceive and lie from what they did to me. I mean, so it was impossible to do anything. You know, you, you, you're in a car and you're driving from, you know, London to Leeds and your co-passenger keeps saying, turn here, stop there, reverse, you don't get anywhere. Mm. And this was the issue. And that's why when you saw, you know, everyone to the outside world saw us trying to do our best, that's what we were doing. But behind the scenes, it was this comedy of, you know, of, 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 of what was going on in terms of no consistency in approach and just basically no one knowing what they're doing. And uh, if we just go back on to some of the money, because uh, the, Again, uh, the, the urban myths that are surround the sort of deal, mm. and uh, you know, we can put these to bed right now about you know people having to uh, give give uh, GFH money to pay uh, players' wages. There's uh, lots of talk that, that yeah, Bates, no, I mean, Susanna Bates put money in. What can you tell us about? Well, that's that? true. I mean, you know, um, they essentially, you know, Hisham, and this was, I think, one of the most embarrassing situations to be in. You've just purchased. A fantastic investment. You are meant to be an investment bank. You are meant to have money, or at least the ability to get it. And you then have to approach the old owner and the old owner's wife to ask, please, sir, can we borrow some money to pay the wages? How much did they borrow? I think it was about a million pounds. And I understand, I think, I think, I th I think even Susanna mortgaged something to get it, but um, I'm not 100% sure. But I mean, Having worked in law firms and done deals and private equity for a long time, that is the most embarrassing situation. Well, one of them, if not the most embarrassing situation I've ever been in. I mean, you buy something and then you have to borrow, it's like you buy a house and you have to call up the old owner and say, oh, I want to put a new washing machine in, can I borrow some money? What does that do for the staff that are there when they know about that? The confidence that they've got that you can take it forward. What does it say to the investors that you're trying to bring in that you're having to borrow money from the old owner to pay wages, the most basic things, the wages of the players? You know, and this for me was, oh, I mean, I'd had so many wake-up calls, but this for me, apart from the embarrassing thing, was well, what on earth? You know, Was that a tipping point for, for you when you, it, then it, you start sort of thinking, what, right, well, I need to do something that about That was the now. tipping point, but also the nastiness behind the scenes. You know, because it was so high profile, you know, and I mean, all this, all kind of the seven sins were there, you know, and, you know, from envy and greed and all this type of stuff. But, you know, at the same time of borrowing money from Susanna, behind the scenes, the knives were being planned of what they were going to do to make sure it wouldn't have to be paid back. So, you know, uh, this is meant to be an ethical bank investing under Islamic law, which is part ethical. And whilst you're borrowing money, from someone, you're also planning how you can get away paying it back. Uh, you know, I just didn't want to be involved in all this. And it was, you know, this was around, I think, around about the time Sean was leaving or left and, and you know, Salim was trying to get the top job desperately, desperately. And, you know, and it, like I said, it's this thing about envy and greed and jealousy. And I'll never forget this. Um, and this is one of the funny points with bad points. We were in a Sainsbury's. Um, near a small Sainsbury's near Malmaison, just up the road from um, near the Burger King in Leeds. And um, Salim goes in and up to a chap, in, and he goes, the chap was wearing a Leeds uh, jacket. And he goes, Don't you know who I am? To the guy in the Leeds jacket. And that was one of the moments that I thought, 
what are you involved with, David? You need to get out of this. <laughs> um, because Salim wanted to be the CEO, basically. Yeah. And he was devastated when he wasn't made the CEO. Um, uh, yeah. So uh, what plans then did you put in place? So you were looking at maybe a, uh, hopefully taking over the club yourself at that yeah, point? Or? I mean, well, first of all, I mean, I, I you know, didn't want to be the CEO there. I mean, people will see that when they took over, they will see that I kind of withdrew a little bit and I wasn't there for a, a while, or at least maybe the outside world didn't see that, but inside, I didn't want to be involved anymore. So I came back and I, I, you know, I stayed in Dubai for a while and got involved in other things and let Salim get on with it. And then unfortunately, Salim managed to upset everyone, you know, from you know, the chairman to the, the CEO to you know, the head of finance to pretty much everyone you know, who was astonished by the way that they were being treated, I think. Um, and the way they were being asked to, you know, kind of back up why they were spending so much on paper clips and staples and things like that. Um, so, and then, you know, obviously I became managing director. Um, and I think I was the consensus choice between the chairman and um, Salah, who, are, you know, is a, is a good man, Salah, um, and, and who did care for the club and who did put money, his money in and who had the right idea for the club, you know. and. A lot of people don't know that and I always distinguish Salah from GFH because Salah to me is a good guy um, and he cared about the club you know and he did a lot of good things and we uh, sorry we at GFH you didn't punch me again <laughs> GFH I'm gonna call you on the next time GFH um, you know I hit my name for Salah was sensible Salah because he was the sane one in all of this madness right you know and when Hisham was would not talk to me for two weeks because I'd upset him because I wouldn't do what he wanted mm. he wouldn't talk to me so you're trying to run a business where you've got a micromanager who's a shadow director that's not talking to you. You've got, you know, Celine with big ego asking people, don't you know who I am? You've got no money. You've got all this litigation everywhere. You're trying to juggle everything. And, you know, constantly I would have to speak to Salah. Salah, please do this. Please, please can you calm Hisham down? Please, can you do this? Please, can you? Constantly. You know, and I remember particularly in summer, you know, um, I, shortly after I was made empty, I got an email from, I was arguing with Sham over something, I can't remember what it was, it was most, I think it was, it was a ridiculous thing, I think it was how much white to use on the jersey, I mean, it was ridiculous, and he shouldn't have even been involved, and he basically said, come back, this is ridiculous, who do you think you are, you can't talk to me like that, come back here now, and then Salah got involved, and, and it was this kind of, just no consistency, no stability, no nothing, and um, so all that, you know, I mean, it was just nonsense, and then, there was one investor after another after another and I could see that there was no money everybody was becoming ridiculously pressured now yeah. that you know it was obvious that things were not going the way they should do no money was coming in no investors were interested litigations were happening the regulator in Bahrain was getting very upset it was how on earth did you an Islamic bank buy a football club in you know in, in Yorkshire and then this ridiculous thing about banning alcohol started and banning pork pies and you can't do this and you know then I was told oh you know you can't have your the money from investors the you know, sorry the money from sponsors like Enterprise or Skybet or, or people like that because they're not Islamic you have to give it back so we've got no money already I'm already can't pay anything and they're telling me to give the money back from the people that are paying it because it's not Islamic right so and I thought you know what this is not going where it should be so and I know at that time I obviously been managing director and obviously been involved in the purchase of it. I saw a lot of people that were interested, a lot of decent people with money, with experience. And I thought, well, you know, why don't I try and put something together of the right people that have the right interest and the experience and the financial ability um, and could actually put up with GFH because that takes a lot um, to move it forward. And that, th this is where Sport Capital idea came from. You know, and I approached the existing people and I said, look, I don't want to be too much involved, but I, I think we can put together a group of people here. Why don't we try and approach GFH and say to them, let's do this. And that's how Sport Capital became involved. And we all know the history behind that and then what happened to my ended up, obviously, in my Dubai diet plan. <laughs> right. Um, well, let's, let's just touch on that. Uh, what did GFH say when you told them of your intentions of Sport Capital and, and buying the club? I think what they said and what they were really doing are two very different things. And there's a litigation in relation to this that Sport Capital's taking, because I think Sport Capital was deceived and lied to. You know, Sport Capital, the intention was, with all goodwill and with all the right people in place, to purchase the club um, and to work with GFH, you, you know, obviously as a minority shareholder, but, you know, to, to, I mean, one of the things Sport Capital wanted to do was extend Brian's contract. You know, I mean, I, I think Brian's a fantastic manager and I saw the development he did with the youth and you know, for me, 
what I wanted to see at Leeds was stability in the playing side and to give someone time to build you know that and I, I really did think Brian was the right person and, you know and, and it's a shame what happened but um, and so we were looking at that we were looking at stability we we're looking at all these things you know you know, you know the actual acquisition of the stadium the lawyers had been appointed the note the note the draft notices to acquire the stadium had been sent right so this was happening you know there's a lot of oh you know David was just releasing this for media that's not true that the financing was there you know to get the stadium the money was there the the, the actual and this is through Admini small capital. Yeah, the administration yeah. of the legalities have been done in terms of the notice that you need to issue to purchase stadium to exercise the option. All that. Yeah. Um, the, and you know, it was ready to go, um, and so, and uh, our our intentions were good. Now I later find out that throughout the exclusivity period of Sport Capital, and obviously Sport Capital was paying the wages for a considerable period of time, um, and and the, the running costs behind the scenes, Hisham and other people in GFH were completely breaching the exclusivity agreement and talking to lots of other people. Um, many of them in, 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 in Saudi, which raises the question, did they ever really intend to sell it to us? Or were we just a stopgap to fund another hole in the finances whilst they finished negotiations with someone else? I don't know. I, I know what I suspect. Um, what do you suspect? I suspect it was. I suspect they just weren't serious, you know. and. Then, and, and, and the problem for them was they all saw me as the employee, so, oh, David will be all right with it, oh, David will be fine with it, you know, and then, obviously, Massimo came, and Massimo was part of the Sport Capital group to start off with. So, did, do, did you introduce Massimo Cellino to Sport Capital? How, how did that all come about? Whose idea, and who approached Massimo Cellino? I mean, there were, there were a few people involved in this, um, and I'm not going to forget, because, again, this is part of litigation, and, you know, people haven't been paid the money that they owe commission for introducing Massimo, things like that, so I don't want to... But, you know, there were various people that brought Massimo in, um, in various different roles. And you know, they haven't been paid the money that they should have been, this, this type of stuff. Um, but you know, he came in and initially the, the plan was that he would take, he would be part of the Sport Capital Consortium. You know, I had several meetings with him um, and Andrew. Um, you know, and we all now know what ultimately happened was that Sport Capital you know, went and it was sold to Massimo. Um, and uh, you know, that's also history now. Um, with regards to those uh, those meetings, there was obviously um, a lot of talk about cameras in boardrooms mm. and, and that sort of thing. When you look back on that now, mm. well, what do you take from that whole situation? You know, I mean, this is, is another funny thing, actually. I mean, this is, I think, part of what I and my lawyers call the GFH criminal conspiracy. You know, what they did to set me up for something I didn't do and lock me up and do all these horrendous things to me and, and you know, be complicit in torture and abuse and all these things. This was something which they were very involved in, you know, and, and things were happening that we wanted to see what was going on. They, you know, they'd said, well, find some advice from people, see what we need to do. And, you know, they were aware of this. They'd instructed it. They were on all the emails. Um, and, it, you know, there was a genuine reason for this at the time, which I'm not going to go into now because it's history. Um, and, it, you know, it's not, it's not relevant. But what they then did was use that and try to make it and behind the scenes using people to push these stories out about me. So whilst I'm running the football club, they are behind the scenes damaging me reputationally and damaging sport capital and issuing things that they shouldn't be doing. And I found out this later and they used this as something to damage a relationship that I'd built with Massimo, accusing me of things that I hadn't done and accusing me of things that were despicable. And I was shocked at this. Now I know what has happened and what they did. And you know this, 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 this is what happened. This is what created the comments where Massimo said, you know, unfortunate things about me to the Sun, and you know, and so it was all part of their despicable criminal conspiracy, you know, which they'd obviously sat there, obviously not over a whiskey, um, you know, virgin whiskey, let's say, and come up with this plan. Probably after watching too many, I don't know whether they were James Bond or Austin Power movies, but probably more Austin Powers. But um, uh, I can see a sham as Doctor Evil. <laughs> <laughs> the, you know, Massimo took over a mess. And I went to Brian and I said, Brian, don't answer any of these calls. Talking to secretaries to find out the gossip. 